Good morning, CrossFit Lynchpin. Thursday, January 30th, 2020. Hope, everybody, hope everybody's having a fantastic day. Oh, I've got a puppy. My puppy just came bolting down the hallway. Muggsy, you want to say hi? Do you want to say hi? Let's see if I can get the puppy on camera real quick. He may run away because he's still learning all that stuff. Muggs, Muggsy, come. Come here. Muggsy, come. Oh, oh, the heartbreak. He's just chewing on an alligator toy, staring at me, saying, I'm not going to obey any of your commands, especially on camera. I'm going to make you look like a fool. That hurts, buddy. That hurts. Anyway, he's very cute. Wish you could have seen him. Today's topic, <clears throat> relative intensity. It's a classic fundamental concept of CrossFit. It might be hard to get your head wrapped around initially, but then once you get it, you got it. And I think it's highly misunderstood, but it's critically important. And if you don't understand relative intensity, I think you have the potential to <clears throat> either get burned out, misunderstand what high intensity means, put too much pressure on yourself, and basically go in a direction that doesn't lead to long-term fun, health, happiness, wellness, and all that good stuff. Also, please note that everything that I'm going to chat about right now, this is just classic CrossFit journal material, CrossFit Level 1 material. I didn't invent any of this. It's, it's out there. Um, you could find it. Just I'm going to try to encapsulate it real quick for you. So, <clears throat> CrossFit, constantly varied functional movements at high intensity, and each one of those have a definition. We define variance, we define what functional means, and we would define intensity. And this would be happening in the CrossFit Journal or in the Level 1 Seminar or whatnot. And for intensity, there was a lot of poor definitions in the past that weren't easily measurable. And so our definition of intensity is, def intensity is defined as power, average power, so to speak. And power is force times distance over time. So force times distance divided by time. Force times distance is just work. So another way to think of what is intensity or what is power, it's work divided by time, a.k.a. how much work did you do and how long did it take you to do that work? And if you do that mathematical equation, you can find out your average power. So that's what we're saying. Intensity is intensity is power. How much work did you do? How long did it take you to do it? And intensity, but there's two, there's two parts of that. So intensity is a relative thing and there's a mathematical concept. And that's where I think maybe some folks get uh, a little bit confused. The mathematical concept is exactly what I just said. It's, it's numbers, it's multiplication, it's division. It's force times distance divided by time. It is what it is. It doesn't matter how you felt about it. it doesn't matter if the weight felt heavy or light. It doesn't matter if you felt like a superhero. If you, I mean, it does, doesn't matter. It's numbers and numbers, they have no emotions. That's the mathematical part of intensity. But then there's another part of intensity. So even though... CrossFit is constantly varied functional movements at high intensity, and there's a mathematical definition there of intensity and average power. Then there's the relative side, relative intensity. And so what we mean by relative intensity is, yes, high intensity, but relative to the individual's physical and psychological tolerances. And that's where we leave the realm of mathematics, we leave the realm of you know, facts, and we get into how does that person feel? What can that person, what is that person capable of? And so point is, each person is exercising at high intensity, but relative to their capacity. So high intensity for one person might be different than high intensity for another person. Potentially high intensity for athlete A is a five minute mile high intensity for athlete B is a 10 minute mile. That's fine. If they're both operating at the limits of their capacity, then both of them are engaged in a high intensity effort, even though the work being done, the power, even though those mathematically are different. 
So let's kind of walk through an example with a workout that everybody knows, Fran, to maybe try to drive this point home, the, the difference between mathematical intensity and then relative intensity. So if you've got two athletes, and the key to this working is that both athletes, they're basically clones, okay? Exact same height, exact same weight, exact same arm length, lever length, the whole nine yards. So that when one of them's doing a thruster, if one's 6'5 and one's 5'5, five, five, then one's doing more work. That's not what we want. One has a longer range of motion. That's not what we want. So both are clones. They're exactly the same. Barbells are the same. Pull-up bars are the same. The barbell's the same distance from the pull-up bar. The whole nine yards. And we're going to do 21, 15, 9 thrusters and pull-ups. So 3, 2, 1, go happens. And they both do Fran. And they both do Fran. And they both push as hard as they have the capacity to push based upon their physical structure, how tough they are between the ears, their athletic background, the whole, all those little intangible things, how long they've been training, the whole nine yards. They both do Fran. When the dust settles, athlete A completed Fran in three minutes. Athlete B completed Fran in six minutes. Okay, so twice as long. Both of them completed exactly the same amount of work. 21, 15, 9, thrusters with pull-ups. And both of them moved the exact same distance on the thruster and the exact same distance on the pull-up. So the work, the force times the distance part, the work, precisely the same. The difference is in the time component. One did it in three minutes, one did it in six minutes. So from a mathematical, non-emotional, just numbers perspective, one athlete did it in three minutes, one athlete did it in six minutes. The athlete that did it in three minutes produced twice the power, or twice the intensity, mathematically speaking, than the athlete who did it in six minutes. That's that. There's intensity from a numbers perspective. However, if the athlete that did it in three minutes, even though they've got the same body weight, same lever length, the whole nine yards, maybe they've been doing CrossFit for five years, so they just have more capacity. An athlete B that did it in six minutes They've been doing CrossFit for nine months, so that's just, they don't have the capacity to be their athlete yet. So relative to both of them, they both pushed as hard as they could push on that workout, given their capacity, their, both their physical and psychological tolerances, then relative to both athletes, that was a high-intensity workout, even though it took one athlete twice as long as the other athlete, and that slower athlete only produced half the power of the faster athlete. So that's why CrossFit is constantly varied functional moves at high intensity, but that intensity is relative to the individual's physical and psychological tolerances. So just my personal opinion, I think people see CrossFit and they know that it's supposed to be this high intensity workout, and then they think what that means is every day's red line. That means High intensity must mean 100%, and I've got to keep up with my friend who's fitter than me or lifts more than me or whatever it happens to be, and that's that's not it at all. You know, we say all the time, even though working out is wonderful in a community, friends, it helps with compliance, it helps you show up every day, it helps you have fun, keeps you motivated. You also have to have the mental discipline and understanding to separate yourself from that communal environment and understand Maybe there's five to 15 people around you, fantastic, and you're all, quote unquote, doing the same workout, but each one of those five to 15 people is on a very different and individual path to fitness based upon their physical and psychological tolerances. So I think when people don't understand relative intensity, they have this unnecessary unrealistic <clears throat> and unsustainable pressure that they feel on themselves that, well, since CrossFit is high intensity endeavor, I need to just light my rear end on fire every single day. And that's not the case. I mean, based upon your work schedule, or if you've got a newborn baby in the house, or how you slept, or how everything has been going in your life, relative intensity varies from day to day. You may feel it one day, you may not feel it the next day. You have to, as nebulous as this is, you do listen to your body and pay attention to all the other environmental factors going on in your head. And 
you might have everything in your life line up beautifully and Fran goes down in five minutes and then you do it two months later and you think to yourself, well, two months has gone by. I've been doing workouts, eating well, so I should have a better Fran time than what I did two months ago at five minutes. But maybe for the two or three days before that second time that you did Fran, the sleep wasn't on point. Uh, your boss was just being miserable to you and you're stressed out and your head's a mess. And then you go in and you, you don't beat your last Fran time even though you feel like you pushed really hard, and you gave it everything that you had. Well, that's because on that day, all the physical and psychological tolerance of the athlete were just different, or just different. That's what it is. So again, it is what it is. And I think an understanding of relative intensity helps everybody keep sane and helps everybody sustain this stuff for the long term. So I'll, I'm going to finish up with just one little point, but if anybody has any questions, throw them out there, and I'll try to do a quick scroll before I get out of here and finish my coffee. But in my mind, I also think of this. There's a relative intensity part, and what I'm about to say right now, this is not, you know, CrossFit Journal stuff. This is just how my mind works, so my personal opinion. Constantly varied functional movements at high intensity. I think all too often people can think there's only two things. There's high intensity and there's low intensity, and you, you either brought it or you didn't. But if I think of myself, if, if I think, okay, there's low, medium, and high intensity, those are probably you know, low, medium, high, very classic metrics. And if you had a arc of 0 to 100, 0 obviously being 0 effort, 100 being 100% 100 effort, and you cut those things up into thirds, well, then 1 to 33% would be low, low intensity effort. 34 to 66% would be moderate, medium intensity effort. And then 67% to 100% would be in the third quadrant, third quadrant, that doesn't make any sense. Quadrant means four, it would be in the third area of high intensity. You know, if you just cut that pie, low, medium, and high into three equal sections, that's how they would lay out. So when I think of it like that, if I'm even at 70%, I'm not in the low category, and I'm above the medium category. I'm operating at high intensity, even though I'm only at 70%. Now, I'm not operating at maximal capacity, but it's not constantly varied functional movements at maximal capacity. And I think that is where people miss the boat. They interpret it as maximal capacity every day. And I think that unless you are a cyborg, you will burn out. And then you will say, I got burned out in CrossFit. It's not sustainable. I don't know how everybody does that. I'm tired all the time. I'd be tired all the time, too, if every day was a maximal effort. But every day's at a high intensity. 67 68% can still be a high intensity effort. And if that's what you're feeling that day and that's all you've got, you're fine. And then we could go down a rabbit hole and say, if you're not feeling that and you just want to move and it's a moderate intensity day and you get in and you just hit whatever the workout is at 50% because that's what you feel like you needed to just shake the cobwebs off, have your mind feeling good, not take some pressure off yourself, break a little sweat but not go crazy. And that doing that every now and then helps keep you sane and that keeps you walking into the gym and then you have more of those high intensity days because you allow yourself a lower intensity day every now and then just to blow off some steam. I think that is a very intelligent long-term play for your health and your sanity. And I do that every now and then for sure. I bet there is one workout every single week that I go into the gym and just based upon how I slept or what's going on with work or other life commitments, I'm just not feeling it, but I want to work out and I don't start the clock. And I just move kind of casually. And I tell myself that slow burpees are still burpees. And so there's still some good being done, even though I'm not, you know, doing them at warp speed. So that's it. Relative intensity, a critical part of CrossFit. It can be a little mysterious, but hopefully everybody understands now the difference between Relative intensity, mathematical intensity, how the two play together, they can coexist. 
and just listen to your body. And it's okay to throttle it back every now and then. Okay. See some thumbs up, thumbs up, and waves right back at everybody. Let's see, make sure I didn't miss anything, because I'm usually bad at going back and checking questions, but I think we're doing okay right now. And so I am going to finish my coffee and do my morning reading. Read a couple books every morning, 10 pages a day. If you read 10 pages a day, over the course of a month, you'll finish a 300-page book, which is a big book. So you could be on pace to do 12 of those a year, which is a quite a good amount of reading as far as I'm concerned, and 10 pages a day is not unrealistic. You know, it's, it's a very manageable, manageable chunk. So that's it. Have a wonderful day. Today's a rest day. Enjoy, and we will talk again later.